all right so welcome to uh, peva muni and uh, this is the 18th lecture and we'll be starting linear harmonic oscillator okay so this is linear harmonic oscillator now before getting into the linear harmonic oscillator we'll uh, do the classical one first okay let's understand what the classical oscillator looks like and then get into and then differentiate it like how it's dif uh, different from the quantum oscillator okay all right so in this case this is f s this is say x this direction now let's say that x is equal to 0 this is the mean equilibrium position and this is x equal to a and uh, this one is x equal to minus a all right now k is the spring constant k is the spring constant all right now in this case now what is k k how do you define k what is k k is uh, the stiffness of the spring okay in this case the k of the spring is the stiffness of the spring if higher the value of k okay higher the value of k okay the stiffness the stiffness okay of spring of spring is more all right the stiffness of spring is higher okay more now lower the value of k lose the string is loose okay the string is or the spring is loose okay now <clears throat> you can uh, see that like if you have a spring in your pen that has a k okay and if you have a spring which is in the shocker shock absorber of your car or bike okay so that the k of that spring the both has a different value okay now this defines how the how uh, stiff the spring will be all right so if you have uh, like the spring force the spring force okay it's given by this is fs which is proportional to minus x and then we have hooke's law all right and we have fs is equal to minus kx all right this is a proportional constant now equation of motion from equ if you write down the equation of motion what do we get equation of motion this is m this is T square is equal to F S equal to minus K X. All right. So in this case, you have if you write down this thing, so you'll get minus K M K by M X equal to this is this can be further written like this that you have minus omega square X. Okay, so this is the equation you have. and then 
Now, omega is what? Omega is k by root k by m, which is the angular frequency. This is the angular frequency. All right, and omega is equal to two pi nu, where nu is the frequency. All right. Now frequency can be written as frequency nu. Okay, can be written as equal to one by two pi root k by m. Right. Now nu is related to time period as one by t, and t is equal to two pi m by k. All right. Now this t. Is the time period okay? So these relations uh, we all know, okay, from mechanics, uh, whatever we have learned in mechanics. Now, if I want to solve this uh, equation, okay, let's uh, the solution of the equation one. Now, so let's not derive this uh, differential equation. We already know the solution. Solution of equation one. What will be the solution of equation one? The differential equation we wrote, this equation. The solution will look like this: x as a function of t is equal to a sine omega t plus b cos omega t. All right. Now x t x t is equal to a sine Omega t plus phi. All right, omega t plus phi. Now, what happens here? Okay, like, like we this is a solution given to us, right? Now, this whole equation. This uh, let's see what are the equation the things are here. This is the amplitude. Okay, this is the amplitude. This is the amplitude, and this is the phase. This is the phase, and this one, and this one, is the phase constant. All right, this phi is the phase constant. Now this, this depends. This depends on the initial condition. Depends on the initial conditions. All right, this phi. Okay, now <clears throat> this is the wave equation which we know, the SHM equation. All right, right. Now, what happens in this? Let's solve this. So, at you can see what what are the phase what are the phase constant? What is the phase constant? Let's take an example, and let's see this thing that. At a at t equal to zero, say we start the experiment. Uh, if we start the like moving the block at t equal to zero, at x equal to zero, we place the block at uh, mean position. Okay, in that case, what will be the phi? What will be the phi phase constant? So if you write that, write this down. All right. So we have. Uh, so let's write this down at x equal to x at t equal to zero, and we have sine. Zero. Now this is a t equal to zero, plus phi. All right. So if you write this down, so this is zero. Now this is a sine phi. Okay. Now in this case, a is not zero. So what mean? That means sine phi is zero, and phi is zero. All right. So the final equation which comes out for this uh, situation where the initial condition is this. This is the initial condition. Okay. Initial. Condition. So this gives us that the phi is zero, and the equation which we have here is sine omega t. All right. In this case. Now that is why we write the phase constant separately because it depends on the initial conditions. Now the next, if I try to do another example, if we try to do another example. So this is say, a, sorry, at uh, t equal to zero. Uh, x is at the maximum amplitude, like a. So, what happens at that time? So you have a 
sin omega t what is the value of phi at that time right this is what you get now if i write down this thing the initial conditions so this will give us this relation now this is sin phi is equal to 1 equal to phi this is phi by 2 now x t is equal to a sin omega t plus phi by 2 all right and uh, this gives us that the equation is uh, cos uh, omega t all right so in this case we find out the initial condition changes so this uh, phi changes okay and this remains constant throughout the motion all right if there is no damping uh, then uh, it remains constant and this is the equation of motion uh, the displacement equation we have all right for the block clear now what is the total energy if you write down the total energy what will you get total energy again this is kinetic energy plus potential energy all right this is half mv square plus half kx square okay the potential energy is kx square and kinetic energy is m half mv square now here we have x is equal to now let's write down the general form uh, this is a x equal to a sin omega t plus phi now if you find out v so what will you get x dot you can write v as x dot which is dx by dt right now a omega now cos omega t plus phi all right now if you solve this so we want to write the kinetic energy all right in terms of uh, this thing amplitude so this is we can write instead of mv square instead of mv square we can write half m v is already have calculated so this will be a square omega square cos square omega t plus phi all right so we have as what we have here is we can write this as m a square omega square now this will be uh, we can write 1 minus sin square okay omega t plus phi right we want to write it in terms of the displacement so the kinetic energy can be written like this m omega square now what we if we take a inside this will be a square minus a square sin square omega t plus phi all right so this is half m omega square all right this will be a square now this what will we get here this will be minus x square minus x square all right so this is the kinetic energy in this format and let's write down the potential energy let's write down the potential energy so what we have here is half kx square or we can write down half m uh, instead of uh, k if instead of k we can write like this k what can uh, what can we use we have omega is equal to k by m okay if you write omega square k by m so instead of k we can write m omega square x square right so these are the two uh, energies which we have in terms of the displacement okay now we let's do this thing let's uh, find out the total energy this is ke plus pe all right please mute yourself uh, so in this case ke plus pe all right so this will give you this is half m omega square okay a square minus x square plus half m omega square x square all right so if you write see this the value comes out to be half m omega square a square okay so i could have directly mentioned all these things but i wanted you to just revisit the concept and see the differences uh, all right how it's different the classical oscillator is different from the quantum oscillator 
so we have this energy to be constant the energy depends on m omega and a so during the experiment this does not change m the block you are not changing the block mass omega you have been fixed you are fixing it before the experiment begins and amplitude also fixed during that time all right so the total energy during the whole experiment whole oscillation remains constant okay kinetic energy potential energy keep exchanging the energy levels okay uh, they vary throughout the experiment all right so the observations are here that energy will be continuous energy will be continuous one can take any value of amplitude okay so you change the amplitude you change the amplitude keeping everything fixed okay the energy will increase you increase the amplitude or decrease the amplitude you can give any amplitude to the uh, on the oscillator all right and energy will have any corresponding value it did not be discrete it will always be continuous if you put the amplitude to be zero energy will be zero if you keep increasing the amplitude the energy will also keep increasing but accordingly continuously all right now uh, next observation is max velocity implies now if i have the maximum velocity Where, which and where, at which position uh, the uh, the oscillator will have a maximum velocity? Mean if start, position. If you start from the mean mean position, so in this case the maximum velocity, maximum velocity corresponds to maximum kinetic energy, maximum ke, right? Then we have that for maximum ke, what do we require? If we see the relationship between kinetic energy, this thing. So we already know from the derivation that. Uh, Ke is given to be half m omega square a square minus x square, right? Now, if you want to maximize this value, if you want maximum value for this, what do you need to put x to be? If you put x equal to zero, so you have the maximum value of. At any other value of x, this this quantity will uh, change. Okay, so this will be maximum for x equal to zero, and minimum for a x equal to a. All right. So this is the maximum kinetic energy, kinetic energy we have. All right, which is near the uh, mean position. So this is the mean position, right? If you start from here, mean position. All right. Now, the next one is the minimum velocity. Okay, the minimum velocity. Where will be the minimum velocity? Minimum velocity is near x equal to a. X equal to a. Oh yeah, near the ends, ends of the extreme ends. All right. So the particle now the argument is like this. So the particle spends. The particle will spend more time. More time near the ends. right if if the particle is more oscillating like this all right so in this mean position this has the maximum velocity and then slows down and then stops and then again reverses back so as it slows down near the ends so it means that it's spending more time there okay it's spending more time near the ends and then it's spending minimum time near the mean position where it has the maximum velocity okay it it spends very little time in the at the mean position all right so this is another observation now next one is classically classically from this observation we can state that classically probability probability of finding finding the particle probability of finding the particle will be more near the ends right 
this explains it because the particle will move, move slowly towards the end so it will be it look like, it will look like that it is spending it is uh, spending more time there and uh, not look like it will actually be spending more time there and uh, the probability will uh, if you try to find out any time if if at any time you make the measurements you'll find that most of the time you'll get it, you are getting at uh, the particle to be at the ends okay the probability is higher there in classical oscillator all right now let's now these are the two differences which we uh, see from quantum and the classical one okay we'll see what the quantum uh, oscillator looks like now let's draw the diagram uh, of this uh, see uh, the total energy graph and energy graph actually okay so this is the this is x axis all right now so this is minus a and this is plus a all right so this is this is the energy axis this is total energy all right so now this one and this one is the right so we have this is zero now Now these are parabolas. Okay, I, I, it doesn't look like the way I drew it, but these are parabolas. Now this one is. This one is which which energy? The kinetic energy. All right, and this one is, the green one is, the potential energy. All right, or you can say Vx. All right, and this is the amplitude. is the amplitude okay now we can from the uh, amplitude this uh, these values only you can figure out that this uh, these, these two values uh, this one and this one it's a parabola all right so one is the inverted parabola and this a uh, usual well parabola so this is the energy graph we have for the classical oscillator okay this is for classical oscillator for classical linear harmonic oscillator all right now let's do a problem let me write it down this is a tfr problem but not uh, of from physics but it's a good question now to see all the observations which we already made now consider a classical harmonic oscillator consider a classical harmonic oscillator with a mass with a mass m and a force constant a spring constant is also known as force constant okay so this is k oscillating with oscillating with a frequency mu the frequency mu all right which of the following which of the following okay statements which of the following statements is not true is not true for this system for this system all right now let's write down the statements so statement 1 a says new increases new increases if m decreases b option the oscillator 
the oscillator is most likely is most likely to be found to be found at the at the equilibrium position okay at the equilibrium position and <clears throat> yeah this is the statement and b option uh, sorry c option is the acceleration the acceleration is maximum is maximum at the at its turning point at its turning point okay and d option is the new does not depend on does not depend on how large on how large the amplitude and how large the amplitude of the oscillation is of the oscillation is all right so there is a question given to you option b option b sir option b is what not correct not true okay so you have just learnt it so you are able to do it right now okay so anyways if you know it from before that's good all right so uh, yeah you are right now if you write down new if you write down new this is given by 1 by 2 pi k by m so this gives you that new is inversely proportional to root m so we can write a a is what a is we want a, now a option is we want not true okay we want not true all right so that means this is true okay this 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 a, a is true all right now this one is true a is true where that means the option doesn't the should not match okay and then we have this thing uh, let's see uh, this is a option the c c option the expression is maximum at its turning point what is expression now at x equal to a okay f the spring force is max is equal to minus k a okay so that means the expression the expression is maximum is max at end points all right now because the force is maximum the expression will be maximum all right so this is how you can see it so a c option is also true c is true now d option now new does not depend on how large the amplitude is this is already known we uh, the new is independent of a from the formula itself you can see new is independent of a the amplitude right so this means that d is also true all right now the last one is the b b option we just discussed okay so the oscillator is most likely to be found at the equilibrium position no okay so this is not true right so let's uh, the the correct option according to the question is now b is false here okay b is false just we have discussed okay so this is the according to the question this is the correct option all right now let's do the quantum linear harmonic oscillator okay or shall we do it in the next class hello can do right now you can do sir because it will uh, go on longer very long okay if i start then it will go on for very long now no problem sir no okay. problem we have enough
all right so let's start this thing so quantum harmonic linear harmonic oscillator all right so this is l h o okay now uh, this whatever we are discussing is in 1d okay let's write that also this is l h o as well as 1d we'll discuss 2d later on and 3d also now vx vx is equal to half k x square all right which is defined like this now the potential energy is defined like this okay and this can also be written as this can also be written as half m omega square x square all right so in this case if i draw the diagram so this will look like this now it's a parabola and this is vx this is the vx axis this is x axis okay now let's say that the total energy of the oscillator is uh, we have the oscillator defined let's say take it to be e and uh, this is the half kx square all right the potential energy curve all right so particle could be any uh, with any total energy and depending on the energy we can have the equations so time now the everything like i all i have always been stating this statement to you that it everything boils down to uh, solving the schrodinger equation in every potential which we have taken uh, like whatever we have discussed till now so what we will be solving is again the time independent schrodinger equation time independent schrodinger equation all right now if you see this minus the, the potential is extended over minus infinity to plus infinity that is how it's defined no? the space is every like uh, the potential uh, uh, is defined in that way that it's uh, it's spread out in uh, the whole space no? it's like it's defined over all whole space the uh, the potential energy of the oscillator which we saw in uh, quant uh, this thing classical also that is the potential is given by half kx square all right so this is not limited to just a region it extends over minus infinity to plus infinity all right there is no limitation as we had in this case that uh, 1d infinite potential okay this is this is no there is no y in it actually it is the way it's defined okay there is also half harmonic oscillator we will also learn about half harmonic oscillator where the uh, the bound the x goes from 0 to infinity or 0 to minus infinity all right so the full this is the full uh, quantum harmonic oscillator which has a range of minus infinity to plus infinity the potential energy has that form okay so the time independent schrodinger okay. equation the time independent schrodinger equation is given by this thing plus this is vx psi x is equal to e psi x all right so this will give you minus h cut square by 2m this is bx square plus half m omega square x square psi okay e psi now let's call it equation 1 this is what we are left with okay if i if i try to write down and let's remove this this thing so this is what we get the equation to be now there are two methods to solve this 
Now this is not as easy as the earlier one which we solved for 1D. We have this x squared term here, all right. So this makes the differential equations a bit complicated to solve. So we have two, two methods to solve this, okay. So there are two methods, two methods to solve solve this, uh, solve the above equation. Solve the above equation. All right. And let's see what are they. So the first one is we solve equation one. Okay, so this is let's this is one. Okay, so this is one in row one using power series method or which is called the Frobenius method. Okay. So have you done Frobenius method? I think you have done in your mathematical physics in your college. No, yes, sir. Okay. So power series method, this is also known as the Frobenius method. Okay. So you okay. can, we will not get into that derivation, Frobenius method. We we'll, instead of we'll solve the other one, the operator method, which is much more elegant. Okay. So the other one is we do not, now in this in this uh, solution, in this solution, uh, so, so we solve the Schrodinger equation. Okay, we solve Schrodinger equation. Okay, we solve Schrodinger equation. In this method. There's another method which we don't use the Schrodinger equation. Okay, now this would, seem a bit strange uh, because I have been telling you that whatever the potential you have, you just, uh, you have to solve the Schrodinger equation. Now this is a, uh, a, a different way of uh, approaching the problem. So we do not solve the equation one. We are not, we do not solve equation one. Okay, which is the Schrodinger equation. Okay. Instead, instead we use, we use operator method which is also called the algebraic method. Okay, this is also called the algebraic method. Algebraic method. All right, so this has two operators. One operator is called creation operator. Okay, one is called the creation operator. And the other one is called the annihilation operator. Okay, annihilation operator. Now, what we'll see in a moment, what are they? All right, as we go along. So this is a method which we'll be looking at, uh, the creation operator and the annihilation operator. All right, so let's uh, see. Now, before getting into the derivation, I just wanted you to have a look at the energy eigenfunctions. Okay, let's directly jump into the energy eigenfunctions and the energy eigenvalue. Uh, in JAM level, there is no uh, question asked on based on these operators. Okay, but they might define you the operator and then they'll ask you to call, calculate some operator algebra, uh, some of the uh, commutator brackets or something like that. But they won't ask you uh, anything else. All right, but in JEST and TIFR and anything else above that, like net and gate you'll definitely be, uh, can be asked from these things, okay? So for that, we'll be doing the derivation. Uh, in the beginning, we'll solve, uh, just see what the energy eigenfunctions are without deriving them, and then we'll derive it, okay? So energy eigenstate. Energy eigenstates of linear harmonic oscillator. All right. Energy eigenstates of linear harmonic oscillator. So, this is given by psi n x is equal to alpha square by pi. Now this is one by four, okay. One by root over two n, this is n factorial. And uh, so this is e to power minus half alpha square, okay. So one thing more, uh, it, it's not necessary that whatever I do in class, uh, 
it might be uploaded to the uh, YouTube. Uh, most probably the numericals part. Okay, I will do extra questions in uh, this thing in during the lectures, and uh, maybe uh, in whatever I upload on the YouTube, uh, it will contain numericals, but not as much as what we do in class. All right. So it's better to uh, like uh, attend the lectures if you want to like learn more. So this one is uh, alpha is defined like this. Okay, this is the form. You, do, you do not get uh, scared by the form. Okay, uh, don't worry about it. You'll get the hang of it as we keep on using it uh, several times. So the alpha is defined like this. Okay, alpha is some constant which is m omega by h cut root over. Uh, now this h n. Okay, uh, can anybody tell me what H n is? Hermite polynomial. Yeah, H n is a, a polynomial uh, of say alpha x. Okay, with degree n. With degree n. All right. So let's talk about Hermite polynomial a little bit. Okay, let's talk about Hermite polynomial. What are what what is the Hermite polynomial? You don't need to remember so much. I'll give you pointers which part to remember and which part not. Uh, just don't like you can forget about it. So Hermite polynomial. This H n is a solution of uh, second order. Second order. Okay, differential equation. Okay, second order differential equation. All right. Now, <clears throat> ah, one more thing. One more thing that whoever is thinking of a, a dual degree or a integrated program, and uh, because they'll have to uh, like uh, attend uh, interviews, so make sure that you derive learn know the der uh, derivations of the important uh, like the important derivations. Okay, like the one we'll be doing for this thing, uh, operator algebra. Okay, so this one is this is the equation looks like, and this is the solution to this equation. This is a differential equation, and this Hermite polynomial h n y is a solution to this equation of equation of this format. Now h n y h n y is called h n y is called Hermite Hermite polynomials. H N Y is called Hermite polynomials, All right? So some of the H N Ys. Let's look at how it looks like. Some of the values of H N Y. Values or expressions of it, not values. Expressions of H N Y. All right. So. Uh, in this case, what we have is h zero. Now, if you put n equal to zero, we get one. Okay. Now, these are the ones which I want you to remember. Uh, sometimes it's useful to solve the problem. So this is four y square minus two, and at max you require h three. Okay. They won't ask you beyond. They might ask you give you values of that, but you don't require to remember that. Okay. If they have given you something more than that, they'll give you some kind of table or some reference. So these are the values. Okay, uh, one you can, one thing you can notice that uh, this is a constant that n equal to zero value of Hermite polynomial is a constant one. Then you have uh, one uh, n equal to one for that. Now these are you are putting n equal to one. Okay, everywhere. This is these are the values of n. So n equal to zero. Now in this n equal to one is there. Okay, which is equal to two y. Now this is a this is a uh, now we are getting the polynomial, all right. Now in this case, uh, h n equal to two. So we have a uh, uh, this uh, quadratic equation, okay, quadratic power, the like, uh, second power of y. Then if you go for this one, uh, the third one, you have third power as well as a single power is also there, okay. So this is the form you get. Keep on getting like this, higher and higher order uh, polynomials. Now uh, if I Try it one to gen get a generating function. Uh, how do you generate uh, HN? So this is the process. Okay, this is the process. So it's given like this. 
you can generate all the functions like this okay this is the expression which you can use for and if you put n equal to 0 you can see what happens if you want if you put at n equal to 1 you'll see what happens so you'll get keep getting the polynomials okay using this uh, generating function all right so again you don't need to remember this there are no questions asked on this thing but just for your information i'm giving you these things you don't need to pick up a mathematical physics books uh, book to learn about it okay this is what you need uh, exactly so the ground state all right if you want the ground state if you see now this is psi naught is equal to alpha square by pi okay so don't worry about it of uh, like if you uh, if you keep using this uh, functions you'll remember this okay so you don't need to separately remember this now this is you can see the format okay you have an exponential term all right let's uh, let's write down all the uh, like first uh, three states and then we'll discuss uh, what to remember okay first excited state first excited state looks like this this is psi one is equal to alpha square uh, by pi okay this is one by four, right? This is one by four, and we have one by root two, and we have two alpha x e to power minus alpha square x square by two. All right. Then we have a second excited state. Second excited state. All right. So psi two is equal to alpha square by pi. Okay, one by four this is one by two root two. Four alpha square x square minus two e to power minus alpha x square by two. All right. Now have a look on this. Now stop writing and just uh, look at the screen, and let me show you something. So what do you see in every of in every wave function you have this format. You have a constant. Okay, you have a constant. In every wave function you have this format. You have a constant. You have a polynomial. You have a polynomial of or degree. In this case, what is the degree? N is equal to two, right? And in this case. And this part is the exponential part. You have an exponential function. Okay, so you have to remember this observation. So any wave function of a which is uh, of a harmonic oscillator has this format. Be it any state. Okay, you you'll have a constant part, you'll have a polynomial part, and you'll have an exponential function. All right. Now let's uh, plot few of them. Okay. Now we have already plotted them during the plotting sessions, okay, in previous lecture, I think the second lecture, okay, that will be helpful here. So let's plot plots of plots of eigenstates. Plots of eigenstates. All right. So in this case, uh, the first one is the ground state. First is the ground state. All right. So since you have already uh, those who have already attended the lecture previous lecture, they already know what the form of the uh, ground state is. Now ground state. Now in this case, the n which we didn't write here, the n starts from in this eigen states. Uh, I have already written down this. This is the value of n. Okay, it starts from zero, not from one. Okay. So the ground state will correspond to n equal to zero. And we know that the wave function, the ground state wave function, we just wrote it down, is proportional to minus alpha square x square by two. Okay, so we can draw the graph. Okay, there's a constant here, which we like we didn't do that. So let's draw the graph. So how will the graph look like? 
sir bell shape bell. curve bell curve there is a, a bell curve all right so everybody knows that i am very good at drawing the vertical line but not the horizontal line with this pen tablet so this is psi uh, not and if we plot this what will it look like so the psi not is looks like this it is happening here okay so this is the plot for uh, psi and then we have the plot for if you try to draw the plot this is for psi okay this is the psi plot psi not now if i draw the square mod square of this one how will it look like if i draw the mod square of this graph how will the graph change so we had already the maximum value will not change so it, it, the the same uh, technique which we applied for plotting uh, mod sine sin x okay so the same technique will apply here so what will happen is uh, for larger values that it will follow the graph okay uh, but for smaller values uh, it will like uh, get become like this and the maximum value will remain one okay one or whatever the constant is and it will be like squeezed squeezed up like this okay it will squeeze squeezed up like this it will be like this all right all right then it will follow the uh, this thing oops all right let me draw it again so if anybody is getting any other graph let me know so this is a graph for psi uh, psi not and the graph for this one will be let's uh, draw let's write down these things that x equal to 0 we have psi not is equal to constant okay the constant whatever the normalization constant is and if we go to x tending to plus infinity we have psi not going to 0 and x tending to minus infinity psi not going to uh, zero all right now if i write down this thing uh, we have if we apply the parity operator if we apply the parity operator the, let's write down the in terms of proportionality so what will have uh, what will we have in this ground state if we applied the psi not uh, the operator op uh, parity operator on psi not what will happen what is the changed it will remain unchanged okay yeah. so this this is a positive sign here you have the positive sign here okay so this is uh, even under parity so we can say that sin not sin not is even under parity or we can say sin not is invariant sin not is invariant under parity transformation under parity or parity transformation sometimes it's written like parity only parity transformation okay the conservation of parity occurs in during nuclear reactions okay uh, so that is a different thing but if we talk about uh, that something is commuting with uh, say hamiltonian okay so we'll talk about that uh, if parity operator commutes with hamiltonian in that case uh, the eigen states the eigen states of the hamiltonian will also be the eigen states of parity operator that means the wave functions uh, the eigen energy energy eigen states which are the eigen states of uh, hamiltonian operator okay uh, if i if i write down this like this let's uh, like uh, somebody asked a question a uh, few days like uh, in the very first lectures so if if this is given to you okay so for any if you have any operator if you have any operators a and b okay so i'm discussing this now because this is required somewhere uh, in the lecture if you have a and b commuting okay then the eigen states 
the eigenstates of the a and b have common eigenstates you can write like this then a and b have common eigenstates then then a operator and b operator have common eigenstates okay the eigenstates of uh, operator a will be will, will be also eigen, eigenstates of b okay this is the observation okay we, we are not into the into the proof of this you can take up any uh, book like hc verma or jtv to have look at the proof okay this is very important observation okay so <clears throat> if if or it, in other words if uh, say psi is eigen state of uh, psi is eigen state of uh, a then psi is also eigen state of b so there is a proof for this okay i'm not getting into the proof but the statement which uh, the person asked was uh, that was uh, slightly incorrect okay so let's take an example in this that h commuting with p now if if this is zero if the hamiltonian and parity operator now p is the parity operator okay p is the parity operator okay and if this is zero uh, sorry the it commutes with hamiltonian operator okay so that means uh, uh, this is this is only possible when uh, we have a potential which is in uh, symmetric okay so this happens for symmetric potentials symmetric potential is there which is uh, the harmonic oscillator is also symmetric potential okay you have a symmetric potential uh, so that means if you operate v on vx you will get vx okay so in this case in this case what happens is that the eigen states uh, the 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 eigen states say if this is the situation the eigen energy eigen states the energy eigen states energy eigen states are also eigen states also eigen states also eigen states of parity operator okay the energy eigen states are also eigen states of parity operator which means which implies that the eigen states the eigen states will be will be either will be either invariant will be either invariant will be either invariant under parity under parity under parity transformation transformation or will change sign or will change sign under parity transformation okay that is that is the eigen states in one sentence if you want to write down this whole thing the eigen states will be will have or let's write down more specifically the energy eigen states the energy eigen states the energy eigen states are or have the energy eigen states have definite parity now i have already defined what a definite parity is in previous lectures okay i have definite parity 
means either the eigen value of the parity operator will be one or plus minus uh, one or minus one. Okay, and that means it will be definite parity. Okay, so this is the statement uh, which uh, is accurate. Like the if this if parity operator commutes with Hamiltonian, so the eigen states, the energy eigen states will be either invariant under parity transformation or it will change sign. Okay, or it has a definite parity. You can say in one sentence. All right, this is what is meant here. Okay, so I think uh, now let's complete this uh, discussion for uh, and then we'll let's just one minute more. So if in this ground state, you can see, so in the ground state of LHO, okay, we are continuing the discussion from the ground state. Ground state, if you see the ground state wave function, okay, so ground state, if you draw this thing, if you draw the mod square here, Okay, if you draw the mod square, how will it look like? It will look like somewhat like this. Okay, it will go like this and then it will maxim, ma go maxima here and then it will come down like this. Okay, so this part, this one is mod psi naught whole square. All right, so what you can see here is that what is the probability? How, how, what is the probability of finding the particle? Uh, like, which is where is the maximum? Which value of x? Uh, uh, mean position. Mean position. Mean position. Okay. So the probability of the probability of finding probability of finding the particle is maximum is maximum near the equilibrium position okay now this is a purely quantum behavior this is not in any way related to classical you cannot think of a situation where this occurs in classical mechanics okay so this this of this uh, phenomena this this thing that it is coming out to be the the particle will be inside the, the near the mean position it will be maximum we see that remember in classical it was the end points where it was maximum all right so this is the observation which we make here. Okay, now uh, this is observation is uh, important to mark. All right. All right. So let's uh, stop here. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a great day. All right. Thank, thank you, sir. You, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.